All right, so as I was saying, uh, I start my cutting process and then I'm, I'm going to flip my board over, cut the next angle, slide it up to my stock. Are you writing your ring on there? Am I what? Writing your ring number? Yes. Well, I'm, I'm writing the segment number on there. Oh, in other words, what I'm going to do is I number each segment as I cut it on the face side to face facing up. That'll help me when I start trying to reassemble everything. Uh, it, it, it's not an absolute necessary step. I like to do it though because it kind of keeps my grain flowing all together. Okay, so now, now I've completed all my cutting, so now I have my 12 pieces, which are, wow, I don't know if I can, I probably can't get all those over there on the table, but uh, we can do it like this. So now I've got my 12 pieces, 12 segments for that layer. All right, the next step I'm going to do, and actually before I do that, I'm going to go ahead and plug this in. Hot glue. Yeah, I know, that's kind of cheesy. You'll see why in a minute. But the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to start gluing my segments together. And we can, we'll do this so everybody can see. Now I took the liberty of going ahead and gluing some of these up um, when I first came in because I didn't want you to sit here and have to watch glue dry. So, um, I went ahead and sort of pre-assembled some of these. But basically, just a, a little bit of glue, and then rub the adjoining segments together. And what that does is it coats both surfaces, coats both surfaces, with a little layer of glue, keeps the glue off my fingers, and then I'm just going to simply stick them together, and you can actually feel it. When it starts to bond, I don't know if y'all use this type bond too, glue, but when it starts to bond, you can tell it right away. I mean, it just all of a sudden gets tacky, and then, you know, it's, I wouldn't say it's ready to go, but it's close. We'll do the same thing on this one. Actually, I, I kind of messed up here. I got out of sequence on my numbers. Please forgive me. I usually like to hold these together for about 20 seconds or so. All right. And now we have two half rings. All right. Now I'm not going to put any more glue. In fact, I'm going to put the glue away. No more glue for a while. Now, I'm going to take this one apart so I can reuse this clamp. I didn't bring enough clamps. All right. In the interest of time, I'm just going to say, okay, 
pretend that that clamp is now around this piece of wood and I've got these dowel pins in there. There's no glue on these two, these two joints, okay? So now, effectively, what I've got is I've got, after it dries for a couple hours, and I take the clamp off, then I have my two glued up half rings. And, of course, since there's no glue here, then they come apart pretty easy. The reason for having the dowels in between here is this. My cutting is somewhat inaccurate. And my sled is a little bit off. It may only be off one-tenth of a degree. But you multiply that times 12, and you're off a degree. You know, more than one degree. More than one degree makes a lot of difference when you're gluing up these segments. You want the segments to fit nice and snug because that's a, a gap right there that glue's not going to fill up. Can you zoom in on that and, and get that? I need to turn it one way or the other. See the gap in there? So. So glue is not going to, to fill that up. So the next step in this process then would be to true up these angles. So what I'm going to do with then is take this over to my table saw. Excuse me, I'm just going to walk over here and get this. You don't have to follow me. And there's, there are different ways you can true that angle up. I use a sanding disc, a, a wheel on my table saw. Uh, just take the blade off, put this on there, and you're ready to, to start sanding. And I just, basically all I have to do is just touch it there for a second, and it will flatten out those, uh, those edges. Can you do both halves? Can you do both yes. Halves? You do this half, and then do the other half. So now, when they go back together, instead of having that gap there, now, they're going to fit together the way that they should, with no gap. You could do the same thing on, on a belt, belt and disc sander type thing, or I've even done that, flattened those with just a piece of sandpaper glued down to a, a piece of MDF board. Okay? So now, now with the two rings, I'm ready to re-glue those and re-clamp them into place. All right, and just quickly, this kind of goes back through what I just did. And clamping the two halves back together now. And then just repeat that process until all your layers or glued up. Now, here's the next thing. <clears throat> when these come out, when the glue's hardened, it's set up, uh, I usually let mine set up at least a couple hours, sometimes longer, but at least a couple hours. You're going to have areas where one piece sticks up higher than the other. Okay? Some segments will just I don't care how hard you try, you can't get them completely flush with their neighbors. Um, so what I do then is I run this through a thickness sander and flatten these rings so that the surfaces are all nice and smooth and level with each other. So what I'm going to end up with then is this kind of ring. Okay, you need to zoom in on that one. The smooth one? Uh, yes, I can if I'll get it back in just a minute because I'm going to use it for more of the demonstration. Next step is begin assembling. After I've got all these flattened, now I'm going to start assembling the layers together, gluing one on top of the other. 
first thing I want to do is assemble the base or the foot. But how do I know that I'm going to get in the middle and not off to one side? Well, <clears throat> again, there are a couple of different ways that you can uh, can work that out. And I've watched YouTube videos on some of the different... <coughs> saw one guy that he, he got some kind of a dial indicator and he was moving this around on some kind of a rotating table. And I was thinking, man, you know, Besides, you know, that's expensive equipment to be doing this with. And, uh, you know, besides, I'll never get the hang of that. I came up with a better way. And I think it works just about as well. What I do is I take just a scrap block of wood that's about the same thickness as this. Cut it so it fits inside the hole there. And I'm going to secure it down with a little piece. Actually, I'm going to secure everything down with a little piece. I hope it doesn't peel the finish off here. Let's just kind of hold things down with some double-sided tape. All right. Now, what I'm going to do on this is I'm going to draw across this piece that's in the center. I'm going to uh, draw lines from my joint angles, or my angle joints, segment joints, the sides of my segment, across. Do that once. Twice. Three times. <coughs> four. There's five. And six. Now, what that does is that creates for me a center point. And somewhere around here, I have a compass. piece of material from my base measures three and three quarter inches. So I've set a radius one and a half, one, two, three eighths, one and seven eighths. I'm going to use this center point that I found in my scrap block of wood and simply scribe a line on here or scribe a circle. Now that's a hard piece of maple right there. Compass doesn't even stick in it. So now I can take this up, move this out of the way, and my base should fit right there. Okay? And it'll be pretty doggone close to center. Now, I dry fit it. If it looks good, I'll go ahead and put my glue on there and then clamp it. And a lot of times I'll just use my drill press. I know that's not the best use of a drill press, but I don't have an arbor press. So I'll just use my drill press to press down on it. Just something to kind of keep the glue you know, keep it from lifting itself back up or keep everything from wiggling around. All right. So I've done that. Now, now is that the actual base that you're going to turn? Uh, yes. Okay. So now, that'll set up for about, oh, at least a couple of hours. If I'm going to really rather it set up maybe overnight. But the next thing I'm going to do then is pretend that that glued on and that it's set overnight. And now I'm going to combine that layer and that layer. Okay? 
Again, we have to come up with a method to make sure that it's pretty well close to centered up. So, what I have come up with is just to create some diagonal lines on my segments going from corner to corner of four segments and this will be the first one rotate it 90 degrees and do another one I was off a little bit on that one. I may have to go back and redo that one. Okay, so now I've created these diagonal lines, diagonal lines, excuse me. And now what I'm going to do is just connect the intersections of those diagonals all the way across. Okay. Now, somewhere have a square. I'll usually go ahead and extend is that okay to hold it like that? I'll usually go ahead and extend that line down the side. I won't do it all the way around. But I'll just kind of give you the idea here. I was off on that one. Moved at the last second there. Okay, so what I'm going to do now, I'm going to glue these together, but the way I'm going to do that is I don't want my joints to overlap. I, or I don't want my joints to fall in line with each other. I want them to overlap. So what I'm going to do then is I'm going to line up, just kind of looking at the inside here, and just kind of keep moving things around until... I get a joint line that lines up with these diagonal lines that I've made. So I know if I'm too far this way, oh, okay. <laughs> I know if I'm too far this way, then I'm off. If I'm too far this way, then I'm off again. So now, it's going to be very careful and get that set. Do you got to do that every time you add a layer? You put down the hash marks and everything like that? You do. If you don't, uh, then you really, there's probably better ways to do it. I just haven't come up with one yet. That's the Well, but yes, it, it is. Right? And, it's and, it's it's time and the thing about segmented turning is turning is uh, nothing. Turning is the easy part. It takes no time to turn it. All the time is in the cutting and the assembling part. Now, move some stuff out of the way get my hot glue get up here going. I don't know about you, but when I try to glue things together, the glue is somewhat viscous. When I put my clamps on, if I put glue on here now, put my clamps on it, it would not be where I want it. It's almost impossible. So what I've done is I've come up with the idea of just getting some little blocks of wood, and I always have plenty of little small pieces of wood laying around. And I'm going to hot glue just a little spot. Now 
usually four pieces. I'm sorry, I got hot glue on your table. Man. That's the thing about hot glue. You can't be, you can't really be neat with it. But in this case, it's going to do the job I want done. So, move this out of the way. Go ahead and unplug it so it can be cooling off. Now, before I take this apart, what I'm going to do is I'm going to create some witness marks on here. And just simply some kind of a mark so I'll know that those two marks go together. Okay? So when I separate it, flip it over, I can spread my glue on here and on here. I can now put these back together, line up my witness marks, clamp it, and I'm good to go. And again, you let it sit for 24 hours? Um, two, minimum of two hours, but I, I really like well, you're using yellow glue, right? Uh, yeah, uh, yeah. Um, I got to think that I'm going to be playing with something that's spinning at a rapid rate around my face, and uh, it may not be a pretty face, but it's the only one I got. So I have to take that in consideration and let that glue dry pretty well. And of course, when I clamp things, and this is overkill on the clamps, I admit. <laughs> uh, the piece of wood was not that warped and didn't really require that many clamps to pull it back into place, but each clamp just has a very small amount of pressure on it. Um, I want to come back to fe well, feature rings. Let me just say this. Feature rings can add an element uh, to your project, a nice element of uh, design. We get a lot of ideas of, from, of feature rings from Native American artwork. Feature, a feature ring can be something as simple as as simple as a wood of a different type, like this. It could be a zigzag. And there's a zigzag I'm in the process of creating. Or, in this case, it could be a mosaic. And that's what I'm going to try to turn in just a, a couple of minutes. I've also done diamonds before. They're kind of a lot of fun, but they are, they will make you pull what's left of your hair out. Um, there are ways to design uh, the feature ring if you want to do, um, say, a mosaic like this. These are the steps I went through, just penciling everything in and coloring things in. Actually, the mosaic here is composed of three rings. Uh, it's one inch high. One of those rings, or actually two of those rings, let me move some things out of the way here. Two of the rings are quarter, one quarter of an inch high, and they're identical. The only thing we're going to do is offset them a little bit, and then the middle ring is one half of an inch high. So, just kind of makes a sandwich. All right, um, and then of course you have to same thing. You have to develop a cutting list for your feature ring because you need to know how big to cut those pieces. And there you're going to be dealing with some pretty weird angles. 5 degrees, 10 degrees, and so forth. And I can explain why later on, but I'm going to move through it pretty quickly. Now, how do you get these lined back up? Once you get them put together, how do you 
How do you go about lining those up? Passes. Oh, here we go. How do you go about lining those up so that you don't have, uh, you know, say one here and one there and just helter skelter? Uh, well, you do have to do some visual lining up and actually make the image the way you want it. Then what I do, and it's kind of hard to tell in this drawing, but once I get everything lined up, I'll go ahead and clamp it down, reinspect it, make sure all my lines and all are lining up the way I want it to. Then I'll take it to my drill press and I'll drill some holes, usually three of them, at odd angles to each other, not at 120 degrees apart, but at an odd angle so that they can only go back in one way. And then I'll take a toothpick to use as a registration pen. And that toothpick will go through that hole that I drilled into the next piece and then all the way to the bottom. Okay? And you do that on the inside. I drill that hole in the waste area where I know it's going to be turned away. And then that's the illustration that I've got here. And then at the end, when I get them all stacked together, I'll clip the toothpicks off, sand them down flush, and then clamp them together. Now we're ready to clamp everything together. Let it dry overnight, and we're ready to turn. Now, a quick question. I, mean, I, I hate to ask you this, but I've seen sometimes where when you turn the bowl, it throws off the. Uh, I've seen it in other pieces where, or, or it throws off the dimensions of the uh, the smaller circular pieces. Yes. And as a consequence, where it's lined up when you put it together, it kind of migrates a little bit. Is, that, is, that, is there a way you can kind of like plan ahead for that? Because you wouldn't really know it until after you started turning it, I guess. Does that make any sense? Uh, I don't know that there's any way you can plan ahead for that. Right. Uh, sometimes it just happens simply because uh, you didn't have things lined up right to begin with. And I have no idea how this is going to turn out. Well, you haven't talked about that yet, the stopper that you just put up. Yeah, it's, it's, but we haven't mentioned that before, just make a change of This is to protect the people in the front row, the jam chuck is. Thank you. I've never tried turning any red heart. When I cut it with the saw, it seemed a, a very soft, like pine. And I know what a piece of pine will do. You know, uh, it has a tendency to come loose. And, uh, and, you know, if you put a lot of pressure on it, it's going to come loose in the chuck. So, hmm? red heart. That's not too bad. And I usually wear a face shield when I'm doing this first part. Uh, simply because I don't like stuff hitting me in the face. And now I don't know how, uh, how much time we have. <coughs> the guy hadn't come pointing toward his watch yet, so. Is there a particular what? You start on one end or the other. I usually start at the top and work my way down. Okay. I'm not going to finish this whole thing here tonight. I know that. But what I would like to do is get... I would like to get a little of this feature room. So we can see what it's going to turn out. I've been dying to turn this just to see if it's going to turn out right.
Yeah. It doesn't taste all that great. Have you experienced uh, wood chipping out of the seam? Just, just you know, tiny little chip out of the seams? Yes, uh, sometimes in some woods are worse about that than others. Uh, right now, um, this uh, wingy seems to be kind of bad about chipping. Now Hans uh, talked me into bringing some other examples of some segmented work that I've done, and you're welcome to take a look at these. Again, feature different kinds of feature rings. Um, This one should turn out looking like that one, but just with, uh, I use Paduk, I guess that's the way you pronounce it, and that one I'm using Red Heart in this one. And you can really tell, you can really tell the wingy because it's hard. But actually it's looking like it's going to turn out pretty good. Uh, looks like I had my alignment uh, in pretty good shape. There's a couple of there are a couple of places that might I might have missed it a little bit, uh, but you know it's like the Christmas tree. You know you always put the bad side to the wall anyhow. Okay. Um, it's eight o'clock. I don't know if we're finished or if we're um, have to be out of here at a certain time. Um, and I probably run over my time. And if I did, I apologize. Um, but I did want to get this turned down a little bit just to see, you know, if it was going to turn the way I thought it, it thought it is. Anybody have questions? How long does it take you from start to finish to just get the bowl glued up, ready for turning? Oh, for example, this one. <laughs> <laughs> two weeks? Um, you know, I probably should at least one day sit down and keep track of my time. And I've tried doing that on other projects. Uh, I probably have, I'm going to say I have tw probably 20 hours in that. What is the finish? On that one is lacquer. It is. On your chip out situation, what did you do? Is all that do the shear, real, real light shear scrape with it? What I'll do is once I get everything shaped down to the general shape, then I'll come back with my uh, scrapers, my heavy duty scrapers, and do like a final pass or two with a heavy duty scraper. That'll get rid of most of the real tiny little chips. Um, and then, of course, I use my 80 grit sandpaper and just work like a dollar. What was the first tool you were using? Oh, uh, it's just a standard half inch bowl gauge, a uh, bowl gouge. Yes, this is a, a it's a round nose internal, internal scraper. Nice thick one. Yeah, good and thick, so it doesn't vibrate too much. More I'll be glad to answer any more questions. Um, we could talk about feature rings for another two hours and kind of go over some of that, but I don't want to keep you here any longer than I have to. I appreciate you being here, and I appreciate the questions that you've asked and interest that you've shown. Um, we appreciate you. If, if you have any tips from me, I would love to hear them.